taking shelter at the moment because it's extremely windy, probably too windy to be doing time lapse. But we're up here near Mount Cook. There is an awesome rainbow. It's just now fading, it's super bright and vivid. So uh, I have a funny story that just happened. Usually you want a polarizer if you want to make if you want to make skies a little less hazy. So when we first got here, I was like, oh, I'll put a polarizer on on the camera just to, you know, make it a little make this mountain a little bit more dramatic. And then the rainbow was forming in the time lapse and I forgot that I had the polarizer on. Oh my god, this is going to be such an incredible time lapse. I, I can't believe the rainbow is forming right where I started the time lapse. And then I, I started thinking for a second. I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. What did I put in front of my lens? And if you know what polarization does, it cuts out reflections and, you know, reflected light. But unfortunately, it cuts out rainbows. So this whole time I'm thinking this is an incredible time lapse. And then I realize, wait, I, I essentially deleted the rainbow out of my time lapse. I was pretty upset. I reset up the camera as quick as I could and sure enough some rain came in and then the time lapse reformed but even stronger that was pretty incredible we are heading down down the hill after a pretty spectacular event um yeah that that rainbow over the mountain was uh pretty hard to describe pretty awesome i am beyond excited to see how that looks in the time lapse awesome first night at mount cook national park we're gonna grab some food and prepare for sunrise So we have some pretty awesome conditions here near Mount Cook. Some really incredible clouds moved over and uh, doing a motion controlled time lapse. So right now I have the Nikon D850 with the 16 to 35 on there. I'm shooting pretty wide and the camera's kind of moving up this slider to reveal more of the landscape. So you start out pretty close to these rocks. As the camera moves up, you reveal more of the foreground and uh, the mountains just look really awesome in the background. All right, so it is afternoon here at our campsite near Mount Cook. We went down the mountain yesterday, got a little bit of dinner, and then uh, attempted to get some sleep. Unfortunately, <laughs> sleep was a little difficult. A pretty big storm came in last night, so <laughs> we probably got maybe an hour, two hours of sleep max. Uh, the van was just shaking around like crazy to the point where we actually thought um, that <laughs> we might tip over. 
Luckily we didn't. Um, woke up for sunrise and actually got some really beautiful stuff. Managed to see an awesome yeah. rainbow, caught a few time lapses of that. And now we're just kind of relaxing, backing up some data, and then we're gonna head up the Hooker Valley track to check out some views of Mount Cook from up there. Super beautiful view. Hooker Valley track for sunset. I'm gonna try and get the light kind of shimmering up Mount Cook. Pretty nice, not bad conditions. Really a little bit too clear, but uh, definitely nice to have a few clouds kind of rolling in over the, over the mountain over there. All right, you guys, thanks so much for watching this episode of Capturing New Zealand. This was such a fun moment of the trip. I was pretty focused on shooting these time lapses and videos, so I didn't really get many images to kind of go over and review. So I thought it would be fun to review some of the time lapses, go through some of my thought process and show you some of the photograph. So here's that first time lapse of the rainbow over the mountain. This is probably one of my favorite moments from the trip. I shot about 600 photos for this time lapse. This is the process I did in Lightroom. So in the develop module, I really cranked up the contrast a bunch here. So here's the original raw file that came out of my camera. I'm going in, I'm darkening the outer edges of the photograph. I'm really bringing out that rainbow and that really dramatic light. So taking down the luminance to kind of uh, accentuate all those tones coming out. And of course, during the time lapse, the rainbow comes out even more. And towards the end, you really see it kind of stretching over that mountain peak. So wonderful moment to capture. I love the swirling of the clouds over the mountain. That was one of my favorite parts as that rainbow forms. The mountain gets super dark and then that light comes back out as the rainbow is forming. And for this shot, I'm actually doing a one second interval. So this camera was clicking every one second. Things were moving so fast, these clouds were moving so quickly and that rainbow was shifting very quickly. And the quicker something is moving, generally the quicker you want your interval to be. All right, so here's our second time lapse. I shot about 449 frames, I guess, <laughs> for this one. And um, this is that scene where I'm moving up the slider, revealing more of the landscape. So you'll notice this first frame has those kind of out of focus rocks that are really close to the camera. And then as we move towards the end of the time lapse, we reveal more of the rocks, more of the landscape. Um, yeah, I loved the cloud motion in this time lapse. And what I'm doing to kind of accentuate this in post is really bringing out the contrast here around the clouds, kind of darkening the top of the photograph. So here's the raw file right here. So you'll notice much brighter sky, a little bit dark and flat in the foreground. Uh, I also brought in some distortion for the lens since I'm shooting this really wide. Now for the shot, the clouds were moving a little bit slower than they were in the previous shot, so I wanted to do a two second interval so that I can really see the billowing of the clouds over the mountain. I wanted that motion to be a little bit quicker, so I did do a two second interval rather than a one second interval like the previous shot. 
You see a little bit of the motion in the foliage. You really see the billowing of the clouds uh, as we kind of pull up. It's a little bit more cinematic to have some of that motion than to just have a static shot. All right, so I shot this one a little bit different. Um, this is shot on aperture priority mode, so the light meter is changing as the light changes on the mountain. So as it gets darker, the light meter is compensating and increasing the exposure, increasing the shutter speed. And I ran this shot, I think for about an hour. Uh, there were four seconds in between each shot because the shadow was moving quite slowly, but I definitely like the way the shot came out. Uh, for this shot, for anything where I use aperture priority mode or there's drastic light changes uh, and you're letting the camera compensate, you're going to get flicker, so you're going to get kind of a strobing effect on the time lapse. For that, I use LR time lapse, so it's a program to deflicker time lapses. Um, I'll be doing a tutorial on that in the future, but for this shot, I did use LR time lapse. Thanks again for watching the video. Of course, if you haven't, uh, please subscribe. I'll be releasing more of these vlogs, more tutorials, more time lapse videos and aerial videos. And if there's anything you would like to see in the future, please let me know in the comments. I would really appreciate it. All right. See you in the next one.